Welcome to Chromecast Tech It Out. I'm Sam Major, Commercial Director for Chrome Technologies, and on this week's edition of Tech It Out, I'm joined by two guests. One is our Technical Director, Ben Randall, and the other, much more noisy guest, is the Dell 1000T Power Store Storage Appliance. Uh, the format this week, with we Ben and I will be discussing the device and doing a demonstration of how easy it is to configure uh, and deploy, hopefully. Um, so Ben, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Sam. I'm looking forward to showing our viewers uh, this time on how easy it is to configure the power store to present storage to the host. Fantastic. So I think before we start, we should use some cinematic magic and do a quick panoramic whirlwind spin around of the array in all its glory. some non-technical uh, and my feedback on the device is that it looks very well put together we've got some great flash, flashing lights front and back and if we put the, the front bezel on it looks like something out of either Battlestar Galactica or, or, or Blockbusters with Bob Holness um, but obviously you know you've had a lot of experience of, of Dell's mid-range storage um, offerings going back to kind of you know, the grandfather and father looking at the, the old Ecrological the PS or the SC yeah. compellent whatever it shows how long you've been doing it, depending on which way you call those. Um, but is there anything you've seen in the latest offering uh, in Power Store that you know, either sets it aside or is markedly different than, than other offerings we've seen? Well, yeah, I, I'd say that there's nothing here that would be unfamiliar to someone who's been involved in storage, the older versions. Oh, clearly it's new hardware. Um, we've got a pair of active active controllers known as nodes. Each one of those has four data ports a copper service port and a copper management port. In uh, a, a real world deployment, this would have been very gracefully uh, racked uh, and stacked. Um, you know, we'd have taken all of the, the tag numbers and so on and logged it in our ITSM support tool. Um, uh, and then you'd be looking at obviously whether installing it as a standalone or a federated system. Uh, and it would be in a nice, lovely data center and not sprawled, albeit gracefully, uh, across the desk of our, our think tank. Um, but I guess regardless, regardless of where we put this, the question is how easy has it been for you to initialize and configure? Yes, yeah, so I think it's um, a fairly straightforward uh, device to configure uh, using the network configuration guide, the deployment planning guide, and the quick start guide. If you follow those steps, it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's configuration that you must follow. The switches have to be configured the days of getting a switch out of the, out of the, uh, out of the box, unconfigured, plugging it in, plugging the sand to it, um, they're long gone, really. Um, we need to configure VLANs correctly, port configuration, but if you follow the networking guide, it provides you with that information. And you follow the uh, installation checklist, that provides the information you need to follow in the correct order to configure the unit. Interesting. So there's, uh, there's a few things that, that should be considered. Uh, you know, look at the installation part of it, um, and I guess there's different ways, different ways of skinning the cat. Some things we must follow the guide for, and other things I guess would become personal preference. And once you've done it a few times, become your way of doing it. Um, what available ports we've got, etc., etc., will change the way we do these things. Um, in your opinion, what is the simplest way of doing this? What are the best tools you've seen that are helpful? And then I guess final, final three-part question to make it easy: How does it compare? Uh, to something as, as relatively simple as, as the SC. Yeah, um, as you say, there's, there's at least three methods that Dell uh, recommend. So Dell provides um, a number of tools. There's the uh, Fabric Design Center, which enables you to build a configuration for the switches. But 
personally I'd recommend reading the network configuration guide and perhaps using Fabric Design Center to give you an initial template but to but use the clues in that to uh, create the com switch configuration yourself. Um, also there's the uh, Dell Discovery un uh, configuration utility which will discover the unconfigured uh, unit. Mm -hmm. um, although in my preference it was the, the best way to do it was to connect directly to the service port. That was by far the simplest way, and that's actually the way that Dell recommended in their guide. Okay, so that tells me obviously about the, the switching in the fabric. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we then, I guess, go a layer deeper into the array itself and get into the configuration of that? Once you've got the switch configuration in place, uh, you connect your laptop to the service port, and from that, you can via a web browser, you can, get, you can gain access to the initial configuration wizard. Um, that's a very simple, straightforward guide. Um, next, enter details. Next, to continue. Yeah. And actually, the uh, planning checklist provides the information you need for that in the correct order. It makes that job a lot easier. Okay, so looking at the equipment we have here, we obviously have the array itself, a pair of S-series switches, and a power connect, which I assume that's management console. Um, looking at previous generations we've had with Dell's mid-range storage, there was obviously prerequisites we had to follow things like ensuring uh, jumbo frames were enabled. That's about the only technical thing I think I remember <laughs> from, <laughs> from those days. Um, what have you had to do, I guess, prerequisite wise uh, to do this? Uh, I guess what have you found interesting uh, in regards to the switching configuration uh, you know, of, of, of the power store appliance and uh, switching fabric? Yeah, um, well, the main thing is that the SAN is very aware of, of the uh, connectivity that it's provided with. Going through the wizard, it will throw up alerts if you haven't, haven't configured the switches correctly. Yep. Um, the recommendations from Dell are that you use minimum 10 gig switching, obviously, prefer, yep. preferably the Dell S series as we've got here, um, but using an MC lag uh, type configuration between the two. Now in Dell's um, terminology that would be a VLT connection which is kind of stacking but without being stacked um, uh, there are other other brands Cisco call it v uh, VPC and Brocade call it MCT and also we've got a, a separate management switch here for our copper connections mm -hmm. um, again the SAN is able to spot that we've just got a single switch with both ports connected it will throw up a, a warning about that yep. but that's not essential for the actual operation of the switch but Certainly redundant switches for the data path is essential. So a brief deviation from the very loose script that we use for these things. Uh, you mentioned that uh, a couple of other vendors there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we recommend using you know, full Dell technology stack from the whole single pane of glass, ease of management, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. But for our customers that have Cisco networking or brocade switching, how can they check and verify that their power store appliance will be happy in that other switched environment? Yes, uh, Dell provide a uh, third-party support matrix for their SAN storage solution. So we've established how the switches uh, need to be configured. It's well built, it's well architected. And it's nothing short of what we've come to expect from Dell Technologies. And I guess the crux of it is how easy it is to administer. Because if you go back, I'm going to go back a fair bit, but go back to mid-2000s, I think we were wheeling... Uh, you know, Equilogics as they were then around in flight cases to do lunch and learns mm -hmm. and they were so simple that you know we could put those literally on a desk and I remember I could log into the laptop and initialize you know, a, a factory reset array initialize it and be demonstrating that you know we could show customers uh, that we could see the host could see you know LUNs within you know sub 20 minutes so you know don't worry I'm not going to jump onto the laptop and try and have a go of, of this today but you know having that being so simple and flexible it took a lot of cost out of it because compare it to the competition then was mainly fibre channel. Mm -hmm. So iSCSI and that simplicity of doing things in minutes and not days was the savings were huge. Um, I guess to direct it at this piece of technology, um, any nuances you have found uh, and is it comparable in the simplicity to, to what I'm kind of used to last time I touched a piece of technology, something like the PS? Mm. Well, I would say that the initial config of the switches and so on is more complex than you had to do with that. But provided you got that, that out of the way, the actual administration of the, of the SAN itself, creating volumes, provisioning to hosts, that is actually very straightforward. The interface is very clear. 
this all sounds really intuitive and easy. I think mm -hmm. we should do what everyone's waiting for, which is dive into the GUI and show people how easy and intuitive this system is to use. So uh, I'm gonna ask you to chuck it up on the screen so I can see what you're doing as well. But let's, let's throw up on the board and okay. let's walk through some of the basics. I'll just throw it up on the big screen. Yeah, great, thank you. This is where it all needs to reboot and apply updates. We'll be here for hours. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. Oh no, fantastic. Okay. So, being the Luddite that I am, mm -hmm. the thing I know most about storage is obviously capacity. So, smack bang in the middle of the screen there, it's showing us it's got 12.7 terabytes, but we've got free versus physical. And I know, obviously, in the world of, of power store, yes. that what it says it has there is not necessarily what you get. No, because um, what we're seeing here in the screen here is 12.7 terabytes of actual physical storage. Now, Dell guarantee a four to one dedupe and compression ratio on your data. So we're actually looking at 48 point something terabytes of usable storage off a handful of SSDs. It's quite... Yeah, that's quite, quite impressive. impressive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let's talk about simplicity then. So obviously the GUI looks very intuitive and mm -hmm. easy to use. Let's go ahead and add a host. Yeah, fair enough. So we go to the Compute tab, select that, select Hosts and Host Groups. And I'd recommend that we add a host first and give the host a friendly name. So we call them Host <laughs> Run. <laughs> <laughs> and we select the operating system. I'm going to go with ESXi. Yeah. Uh, now go to select iSCSI as the host protocol. Next, then we add the initiator. So, add initiate now. So, so, so we add the initiator and then go next. And that those details are all in there, so they'll click add host, and that's complete. Now we add the host group. All that host group one. Been very imaginative with the uh, with, the na with the naming. Absolutely, <laughs> I'm noted for my creativity there. Um, and we, we select iSCSI as the protocol, and yep. we select the host from the available list, and then create that. And we say that it's created the host group, which contains the host. That's simple as that. Yes, it's, it's very very simple. Okay, so we have a host. Uh, I guess the next thing is we need to protect that. Yes. Can you walk us through, I guess I'd recognise it, SC, PS days was, uh, you know, snapshot, scheduler and so on. Has that changed much? Not very much. It's um, quite close. We, we create a uh, protection policy. Let's go to protection, select protection policies. Yeah. And then we create the, we create the uh, snapshot rules. Mm -hmm. And so then we create there, and we create a rule. So if we want to have a daily snapshot, so we call yeah. this daily snapshot. <laughs> daily snapshot. So yeah. we all, every day of the week, we we'll just do time of day. Yeah. So we'll set that to seven. Call it eight p.m. And again, is that how are you thinking about that? Would that re your business? Hours of business, does it, you know, if, yeah, we're, if exactly. we're 24 by 7, for instance, mm. can we quiesce what's going on to take a snapshot? Yes, I mean, the, the snapshots are pretty much instant, so we can actually layer these, as I'll, I'll show in just a second. So we've yeah. got, here we've got a single snapshot per day, we keep them for seven days, yep. so create that, and then we can create another snapshot rule, which we'll call hourly. Okay. snapshot and we select that every one hour and you can see the granularity there goes down to every five, five minutes. minutes so we can say every one hour and we'll keep two days worth and we can create that okay and so we've got the two snapshot uh, rules there yeah so then we go back to uh, protection policies and we can create a policy I'll call this policy one protection <laughs> protection policy <laughs> and, we, and we call this protection policy one and then we select the uh, rules that we've already created yeah and create that there 
and they can see there's a few seconds that creates the policy. That's quick. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got the kind of we can then create grandfather, father, son copies of exactly. We we could create a whole nest of those those rules. Okay. So we've got visibility of the host. We've protected it. I guess we need to uh, assign a, a slice of storage. Yes. Yeah. So the procedure for that is we go to storage, and then we create a volume group mm -hmm. and create. And we'll call it volume this one. <laughs> volume group. One, one, <laughs> and we can assign the protection policy which we created earlier. Yeah. Select that, and then create, mm -hmm. and that creates the volume group. Yeah. And assigns the level of protection to it as well. Okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we go to volumes. Yeah. And we can select that, and we can go create. And now we've got an option here of either creating just a single volume or we can create multiple at the same time. Oh, okay. So, so if you call it volume and I'll we go, say... I'll volume one, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, well, because we, you'll see, so we've got one selected at the moment. We see we want to create five volumes. Oh, okay, yeah. And we set them to be 100 gigabytes. Yeah. Um, and then we can select the volume group, which we've already created. Yeah. And then... We go next and we get a warning that we've protected it by the protection policy because of the association with the volume group but yeah. that's okay and then we select the host group which we created earlier we should provision it to the host which we've already is a member of that yeah um, there's an option to provide a logical unit number the LUN or generate uh, automatically okay, yeah, we'll yeah. just go with the automatic generation and select next Again, we get a warning now because we don't actually have a host provision to the storage. Yeah. But that's fine, so we'll just continue. And then we cre create. And now we've got a, a brief pause while it creates volumes. Yeah. And then we've got our five volumes have been created. But yeah, you just create 500 gig of storage in, in less than five seconds. So it's exactly. not too much of a wait for something when you think no. about what it's actually doing. That's Absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, it's very intuitive I've, I've understood everything you've done there which i think is, is quite it's a impressive. minor miracle yeah <laughs> okay um again i mean it's, it's as simple as i'd hoped it would be mm -hmm. um what else can you show us in the dashboard can we look at the health of the actual array yes absolutely so we go back to the dashboard um and here's the overview where we can see the capacity performance yeah. obviously yeah. clearly we, we have a sound that's not really doing much at the moment so that everything's yeah. looking very low but but if we, there's no nasty alerts, which is always good to see. Exactly, <laughs> we're, we're looking clear on that. Yeah. Um, if we were to go to hardware, we can then see and select the actual appliance. Mm -hmm. We can then see capacity status and so on, but we can actually look at the hardware tab in there. Yeah. And that will give us a view of the, the disks at the front. And yeah. we can see that that tallies up with what we've actually it got does, in real life, actually, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the rear view, where again, we can see the, uh, the nodes and the, the ports in use and so on. Clearly there's no errors here. If there was a problem, then we'd have a, an alert on, yeah. on, these, on this area. Okay. And again, for the internal view, you can see the status of the fans and so on. Yeah. Okay, so again, very intuitive, uh, very clear uh, and easy to understand. Um, obviously people that are buying power store now very unlikely they'll be migrating from another power store given that it's still fairly new in the market. Yes. I can see we have a migration tab. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that makes life easier. Um, if we look on there, what do we, what do we see? Yeah, so here we can um, import from external storage and we can add a remote system from one of the Dell um, previous generation arrays yeah. such as the uh, PS. Blimey, I mean, you can see that going back to what you and I we call Ecologic, even those customers are still well catered for. Yes. I'll make the assumption, and obviously feel free to correct me as a technical person in the conversation, outside of uh, our customers that don't potentially have Dell that are moving to Dell, migration we use a, a VMware or Veeam or something to migrate that data. Yes, um, that would be the simplest way for a, a client in that situation. Okay. Um, and I believe. But when you set these devices up, you have to make a decision before we get anywhere near this that it's block or it's file. The power store itself can be either or. Um, yes. You've set this one up as block? Yes, that's right. The, the device is by default is configured to block and file. Um, it, if you, and you change that, the configuration 
uh, wizard completely restarts. So you need to make that, you have to have that plan before you start this, otherwise you'll have to go back to the beginning <laughs> and start again. Reset and start yeah, over. yeah, literally it will reset the whole okay, thing. Okay, so think about that one before you start. Uh, that was a bad day at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Fortunately, could... you haven't gone that far unless you've done a lot of configuration. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, we could talk on probably a, a whole different podcast just about the use of using block or file, but are you, mm -hmm. and I'll do this to everyone, can you tell me something very complex in a very short amount of time? But yes. Could you, you know, give us, I guess, the very quick reasons to why someone would use block over file or file over block? Yeah, I mean, block storage would be of most use where you're connecting to virtualization hosts, you're provisioning disks to... Um, to servers in that manner and you're running virtual servers on them. Uh, the file option may be more used to a branch cache or something like that, where you actually, the, the storage is essentially becoming your file server. Okay. okay. It's, it supports Active Directory integration and so on like that, as well as some antivirus capabilities. Thanks, Ben. Today's been really interesting. It's been good to not only talk about the equipment, but to have it here so we can physically show people how, I mean, how very, very simple and intuitive that is. And, and obviously, you and I in our positions and given Chrome's relationship with Dell, we know a couple of things that are uh, in, you know, in the future uh, of yes. Power Store that makes it even more exciting. So, yeah, I think some really interesting times ahead for, for Dell's mid-range, definitely. Yes, thank you. exciting times. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us uh, for this edition of Tech and Out. Um, if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future podcasts, then please do leave that in the comments section. And if you like, subscribe and share, and join us again on Chromecast. Check it out.